George Band in here. Maybe. Rob ba dum ba dum. There he is. Fantastic. Hello there. Fantastic. Let me look at that. You know how to do Skype. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> I say that way too much. People are all learning how to do Skype. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, you know, I used to do Skype a lot a while back, um, and then I had a director for my show in New York that we spent about six weeks Skyping back and forth between here and New York trying to work out um, the script. And then I, I, the app deleted off my laptop and haven't touched it since last year, and boom, here we are. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, well, let me find our... Uh... Our rabble rousing crew here and bring them on in on the old skip Skype. Uh, it is the Sunday radio broadcast. You're live as live can get with us. And uh, 2 to 4 Central, 3 to 5 Eastern each and every week at JiggyJaguar.com. Also, if you miss us live, you can also find us on the mix on Tuesdays. Also, iHeartRadio today, Periscope, and old Facebook. And uh, we also are trying Instagram Live today, which I think is going to be a train wreck. However, uh, <laughs> we are going to see if we can make Instagram Live work today. Uh, I have this. I have this tool called Yellow Duck, whatever the hell that is, and uh, we are going to attempt to uh, to make this work today. So. I've got to find all of our cast of characters here, and uh, once I have everybody, we will uh, jump off the good foot and do the bad thing, as they say. And I don't know who's saying it. don't know why they're saying it, but they are indeed saying it. <laughs> or you're bringing in all the old catchphrases today. I'm going to work in Blowfish to Twine Factory at some point. Uh, we're we're, we're going to do all the old uh, all the old catchphrases. But uh, we while we wait on everybody to join and uh, get this get this little party started here, uh, we are going to go to our first guest. He is going to join us live here on the old Skype Rooney. And uh, we have, uh, over the last, I don't know, probably, I don't know. I think I've, I've had you on the broadcast once or twice over the last probably two or three years, my friend. Um, uh, I've had you on a lot, David, the last couple of years. Every time you have something new, we seem to get you on. Uh, David George is with I us today. David George Band. And uh, you can get more information on uh, Facebook, facebook.com slash David George. And uh, David, talk to us a little bit about your, your latest project, because you're doing all sorts of things. You're performing live. Uh, you have a... What looks like a spinning wind wheel in this uh, press release here. Yeah. Uh, uh, where is it? Oh, it's behind the door here. <laughs> That's awesome. He's got so, a, he is got is a this, spin and um, win wheel, baby. That's I awesome. Just, there are too many people online, to, um, and I don't want to take away from anybody else and not like I'm saying, look at me, look at me. But I thought um, when this started uh, 34 days ago, I said, you know, I'm just going to play one song. And then um, – that was one song every day, and I did about three or four days just picking songs out off my head. And then I started thinking, man, I can't remember what I played yesterday, you know, let alone a week ago. So I <laughs> thought, all right, I'm going to create this. My, my, actually, my wife had the idea. Oh, there's more people joining this. Hey there. Oh, yes. We're, um, we're, 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 uh, we, we have Jay Bird Wells. She's, gonna, she's with us. She's got her ears. Um, we also have John Mosier, who, uh, today is in his Kansas City Royals gear. Usually, uh, every right. Sunday he has a different sports team. Last week it was the Chiefs. This week it's the Royals. And, uh, <laughs> so, David, uh, refresh us here. You, 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 you've got a, a new song every day you were going to do. So, yeah, so, um, every day I sing a song, and at the end of the thing, I get up and spin the wheel, and it's, um... And then I know what to play tomorrow. And that, that way it also gives me a good 24 hours to practice the song. Because um, as you can see on the ceiling behind me, that is only half the albums I've put out in the last 20 years. So I've got a lot of records, a lot of material. So this allows me to, you know, spin it. I've got um, 
what I have on there. I've, I've got all my records, and then I got new song, I got viewer's choice, I have two songs, I have write a song. The write a song was the funnest, um, the <laughs> most fun. Uh, what I did is I asked people to, to let me, give me some topics, and someone said Netflix, and I was like, what? And I said, okay. And then the next morning, more people chimed in with, you know, it happened to be uh, Royals home opener, or would have been. And so I um, created a song called Every Everybody's Having Sex While Watching Netflix. That was the title of the song. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I just, I went with it. I had an idea what Actually. I was going to say. And I don't know if, I mean, you guys have been around enough to, Maybe you remember a, a TV show back in the 70s called The Mac Davis Show? Yeah. He used oh, yeah. to get up with his acoustic guitar um, and go out into the crowd and get things from people in the crowd and write a song. Now, I don't have quite that talent. It's kind of like these rap artists who will get things and just, you know, free flow. I, I'm not that fast. My, my brain um, has a, like a three-minute um, buffering. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Uh, so, but that was fun. So that's kind of what I'm doing. Having fun every day. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm glad you're having nice. fun, my friend. We have got, uh, David I George. the Mac Davis reference. David George with us today. David George Band. He joins us live here in our broadcast. Coast to coast, to border to border on iHeartRadio and also AMFM, 247.com. And, uh, we are trying something new today. We are on, not only on Periscope. And and the whole of Facebook, but we are also on uh, something uh, that I think is going to be a total train wreck, but I won't know till the end. Uh, Instagram Live, and uh, we are using something called Yellow Duck uh, to get us there. Uh, so, David, uh, tell us about your social media following because you've been able to amass all this following to be able to centralize them in doing these songs. I, you know. Um... Social media is such a um, double-edged sword. It, it, it frustrates me to no end, but it's an amazing tool that allows us to do what we're doing right now. It allows me to uh, play music for my friends who I don't get to see anymore, at least for the last month, if not you know, two or three months down the road. It also allows any, any fans I still have lingering around to um, listen to my music. And, you know, the... Um, the double-edged sword to it is, is it's, you know, especially Facebook and Twitter are different. Facebook is like um, we make comments and then we all jump on each other. No, no, this. No, no, that. Twitter, we kind of throw our opinions on there and then we run. And then people get on there. Ah! So Twitter, I go to Twitter for, like, quick reading and, and in, you know, see what crazy sh stuff is going on out there. Facebook, I've had to start cutting back on my friends um, because of um, not necessarily political issues. I get it. We all have different, you know, uh, ways we believe our government should be run, or where where lives should should. But it's what we get into these conspiracy theories and and stuff that's going to hurt other people, and that it, it just eats at me and it hurts because, you know, I I love having friends from all walks of life, and I don't want to. You know, cut anyone off, but man, you you wish you wish my family to die or or speak ill. I mean, I had a guy a couple of years ago, and he was it's the meanest person I've ever come in contact with. So, and that side, that's that's the side I would rather do without. But we are able to play music live. We are able to have you know chats with two or three other people. Um, I was blown away. I don't know if you saw um, see um, John Kaz uh, Kaczynski. Because Kors Korzinski, the guy from The Office and Jack Ryan, he does this thing on YouTube Live where he does like a news thing. It's like good news. And he had did this special thing for these, this girl who had was dying to see Hamilton. And he put together the entire cast to sing Hamilton to her online. It was mind-blowing. So, And that's something I'm working on. Um, I haven't put out – I put out a record last year, and I – I was hoping to do some stuff later this year, but I can't get into the studio because of what we're doing. But I do have um, a little home demo studio set up, and I've written this song, and I am getting Kansas City musicians to join me. Um, 
hard to get a lot of musicians other than orchestra people, but I'm going to do this giant virtual band and orchestra here. Wow. <laughs> That's fantastic. So, uh, John, uh, do you have any questions, my friend, since we've... I'm just reading his um, website here, and I mean, you've, you've played with some pretty cool bands like John Fogarty, The Lumineers, Ario Speedwagon. Was it just well, you had contacts, or was it your work, or was it... Well, the, um, John Fogarty, I actually was in his band. I played with John for about uh, okay, a, little over yeah. a, year, a little over a year. Um, the Lumineers, and, um, you know, I, I, I've been very fortunate. Um, I've worked my, my butt off, and um made enough contacts and i never believe in burning bridges i i think that that rock star mythology is is false um so i like to nurture friendships and partnerships and i've gotten to know a lot of promoters over the years and you know the lumineers they were just starting their tour well they were coming to the end of their tour and their song was exploding and so um my band um Crooked Mile, we're asked to open for them, so we did that. Nice. Um, Jacob Dylan, again, they were going to do a, uh, it was going to be this small show at the Riot Room, and then they moved it to the lobby of the Midland, and then they got kept getting more tickets and moved it into the Midland, so I got to open up for Jacob Dylan inside the Midland, which was awesome. Wow. And Ario Speedwagon, that was just a fluke. Um, I opened up for them twice. Um, what the strangest one was the one um right before john john joined fogarty's band um played with them and sticks and ted nugent at starlight i got to play like four songs um but yeah i've been very fortunate uh you know i i i'm not i'm not too much of a, a session play i mean i i do i can um but I was, I've always been uh, the front man, the lead singer, the main songwriter of almost every band I've been in. Uh, I have joined a few friends over the years on tour and stuff. And playing with Fogarty was unbelievable. It was, um, I went from zero to a thousand miles an hour in, in just a few days. I had to learn 40 songs, uh, get my passport, um, pack and be gone for four weeks uh, on a moment's notice. And... I learned so much from that tour, how to be a better musician, better guitarist, better performer. Um, it was awesome. And so, yeah, there. Freaking Fantastic. awesome. So how did you end up with the, um, I was reading here too, that they used um, one of your songs for the um, touchdown music during the <laughs> 2015 season. Yeah. How'd that come I would, around? I, um, when the Royals were in the 2014 World Series and they were in, I think they were in game two. And a friend of mine was like, dude, you got to write a song about this, man. This is because someone brought this up the other day. The 2014 World Series was bigger than the 2015 World Series, even though we won 2015. 2014, the city was like, on fire you couldn't go anywhere without going yeah royals or i mean oh, yeah. there was a good you know camaraderie in 2015 but 2014 was i think it was more there was even more energy the city was alive so i i, I in the middle of the night i was like okay i'm gonna write this song i fell asleep and i woke up humming this hey hey kansas city hey and i was like all right. So I literally sat down. I wanted to write something that was similar. When the Royals win at home, they would play um, uh, Kansas City, Hey, 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 the Beatles song. And so I sat down and wrote it. And then I literally went in the studio with my band and two other friends and recorded that. And then game seven came and we lost. And so then it was like, eh, nobody cares. I played it live. I think I played it that day after we lost on um channel 41 and then okay. uh then i released it in february and i even offered it to the royals like here use this song i i wrote it for kansas city because the song is specific to kansas city it's not just to the royals right. um and then it just sat there on spotify and i get this call in june from um the chief's admi uh, administration um and they're like hey is this your song and i'm like yeah they're like we'd like to use it um, but 
we, we need to do a little contest. So they put together a contest and I won. Um, I had like 60% of the vote and it was fun and I re-recorded it and they played it at um, during the touchdown and I you know did a special edited version and I added all the things that they wanted and so it played for about a year, and then um, I guess I got so much blowback from from idiots who didn't get the song and wanted their old um, pedophile rock, rock and roll number two song back, and so they pulled the plug, and I don't know what they do now. I haven't been to a game since, um, most because I can't afford it, but, uh, but then, you know, then they win, and the song, all of a sudden, you know, 10,000 people are playing the song again, and Royals play and they play the song and it gets played on on the news channel so it's it's pretty cool it's uh, it's 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 a great honor to have that song getting played in Kansas City so and that's where okay uh, last question bugging you here yeah. out of um, Kansas City um, I listen to a lot of the radio up there like most specifically sports six. You're breaking yeah, up a little bit. Breaking up, John. We're losing Sorry, you, brother. Are you there? There we are. We got gotcha. you. We got gotcha. you. Okay. Up? I was saying I was a big sports freak for Kansas City. So are you a 6'10 or an 8'10 sports guy? Ooh. Um, you know, when I need to, it's probably 8'10. Um, not not out of, out of favoritism of either one. Um, I think 8'10 is the one I just I go to because it's – the first one that comes up if I pull something up. Um, weirdly enough, I'm not a mega sports fan. I am a rock and roll fan. I, I played football in high school, uh, baseball in high school. I played baseball forever. I was um, I was working on scholarships, but then something happened. I My band started taking off, and then I moved back to Kansas City to finish college here, and organized sports, I love going to the games, but I just... I lost interest in following sports and then it became about following you know the band at the time i was big then genesis or motley Crue or you know that whatever the 80s uh, you know so sports kind of fell the wayside um so i started tuning into um ky 102 that was my station okay do you does that make you sad? Are you a six ten fan? I like them both. There's a certain guys at both stations that I liked. I liked, I like Petro at eight ten. I like the morning show at six ten. Other than that, I could go either way. So nice. So Jay, uh, you've been sitting there. It looks like you've been taking notes. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm sure you have some yeah, questions. I finally found him on Facebook. <laughs> I finally found him on Facebook. Finder, um, stalker. <laughs> I shared I shared your fan page. Aw. Hey, James, who's that uh, young lady over your shoulder on the wall there? Uh, depending on where you're looking. <laughs> yeah, there's I don't know. There. It's, uh, yeah. it's going to be several porn. It's going to be a porn person. Because this, the, 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 this <laughs> behind me is where I have to put all the porn uh, signed photos. Uh, because uh, this is gonna th 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 this is gonna sound fantastic. Let's say born and then children. Uh, <laughs> but uh, my my girlfriend's uh, twelve year old often will hang out here at the house, and so we have to put the porn behind me because we ha we have to put the musicians out out in front on the other walls. So. Uh, uh. But yeah, it it, it 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 could be anybody. Who who knows? It it could be Joanna Angel. Uh, it could be Princess, who is now something else. She changed wow. her name. You know, all, all these porn people they have gimmicks. It, it, it's 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 like professional wrestling without taking a bump. And uh, <laughs> so that, that that's you know I I don't have a spinning wind wheel. I'm kind of jealous of your spinning wind wheel there. You, you you can make your own. You know what? So under quarantine, <laughs> I'm gonna put my headphones on just. To no, make no, no, sure. no. You're good. You're good. Uh, Look at that. And you've even uh, got better headphones than we all do. Yeah. What's the wheel? No. So um, <laughs> my good headphones broke. So these are my. These are like thirty dollars on Massman Music something weird. Anyhow, no, that is literally uh, two pizza lids from a pizza box. 
hot glued together with construction paper we got at the dollar store on our uh, one grocery run. And then um, I happen to have brass uh, uh, brads for um, like yeah. Yeah. notebook you pages. And then, um, so then originally it was just, I had, I had this weird little metal thing with a screw that kind of was holding it away from the wall. And it would just wobble. I'd spin it, and it was like, Bruh. and then I get thinking, I need like some bearings. What can I? Where can I get some bearings to make this thing like hold the wall and spin? Well, my sister, my wife said, you need the, one of those fidget spinners. So last night, um, I let's see if I could pull this photo up. I literally took the thing apart, peeled all the glue away, and then um, and let's see. Look at that. Holy smokes. So, so what's exactly I, on it? All right, I'm I'm going to ooh. All right, I'm going to have to disconnect the microphone. Hey, that's fine. But, that's fine. Give okay. give 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 us well, give us a view of this thing. There we go. Song. So, <laughs> song it's, spinner. It's, yeah. It's songs and more songs. So I got like here's this is from my Christmas show, Love Life. Uh, play a cover. Uh, here I go again. Moaning Lisa. Uh, new song. Old deed songs. Viewer's choice. Here I'll play two songs. Or I'll write a song. That, that brings up the question I was going to ask earlier about your, Christ your Christmas songs. Do you yeah. perform that every Christmas? I try to. Um... So we, can you guys hear me now? I You're good. Oh, You're yeah. good. We can okay. hear you. No problem. Perfect. So I um, in 2015. So I've been working on this thing since about 20 2007, I think. And the first year I did it was 2015 here in Kansas City. I did it at the Madrid, and then we were going to do it here in 2016, and we ran into some technical issues, and we had to cancel the show. Technical issues meaning um, I lost a. a um, a key figure of the show, and I couldn't go on with it. So, but in the meantime, I met a publicist based in New York, and then we became partners. She brought in another partner, and we debuted it in New York last year. Um, we did one big show, sold it out, and it was incredible. And we are hoping to um, do it again this year. We don't know. Um, our investors kind of dried up because. Uh, well, they didn't really drive up, uh, dried up. They, they kind of disappeared. <laughs> they have, nobody's, nobody's investing money. Um, you know, Broadway just closed. Uh, they're saying they're not going to do concerts until next next year, maybe next fall. So it's it's putting us in a weird place. Oh my God, you have elf ears on. That is so awesome. Yes, she she <laughs> she has her ears. Uh, <laughs> we have got uh, Jay Bird Wells. Like are those Vulcan or are those uh, Lord of the Rings? Are those uh, El Elven? Whatever you want. <laughs> Whatever you want. <laughs> All right. Jay Birdwells, John Mosier, uh, we're chatting with the David George Band today here on our big program. And uh, so uh, where can people find your music and buy your music? Because that's, that's one of the reasons why we do these interviews is because we, we, we want to – get people to go out and buy your stuff Stock and you. give you some of that hard-earned money. That is awesome. Um, so uh, the Corn Tune at Noon thing, I'm accepting donations. So you can go to watch the Corn Tune at Noon on Facebook. There's a group. Join it up. Donate whatever you can to help out. That is awesome. On the music side, um, you can go to my website, davidgeorgeband.com. There is uh, a page uh, music page that you can go to. It will lead you to the Bandcamp page. So you, if you want to, you can go straight to Bandcamp, and that is davidgeorge.bandcamp.com. Fantastic. And that's it. I did. did uh, I put a record out with the band Volker Brothers. It was me and an acoustic duo um, we had last year. Uh, we were around for about two years. That came out in September. That album's the newest one, but um, that band is right now no more. We're, well, all the bands are no more. What am I talking about? <laughs> now, now what you get is this. This is this is my house. 
I got my guitars over here. <laughs> I, you know, I uh, I sit at home and and make music. Try to. That's awesome. it. <laughs> yeah. What you guys doing? Okay yourselves? Yeah. Oh yeah, I've never been busier. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> With all this. <laughs> yeah, see, James is James is used he to just... sitting at home all the time. So. Yeah. I've never been Dude. busier. <laughs> yeah. and I, I used got... to... Go ahead, John. I was just saying I used I worked in the public, so this is driving me insane because I'm used to interacting with people all day long, then coming home and being all by myself. But Yeah, I'm it's uh it's weird. I, I like being alone. Um, I have an amazing wife who who is working. She's on the um, sea level essential list. Uh, but um, I'm, it's weird being home. I, I'm more busy at home than I was <laughs> when I had a normal job and you know doing music on the weekends or whatever. Now I, I get up at eight, walk my wife to work, come home and get ready for my show, uh, then work on t- tomorrow's show, and then. I'm on business calls and all sorts of stuff. And all of a sudden, it's 10 o'clock at night. I'm going, oh, my God, where where did the day go? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and a, a, lot of, between, a lot of 2 and 3 a.m. shows. It's, yeah. It, it, in between for the commercial break, is it, hey, honey, David, can you go fix this? Can you go fix that? <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, exactly. Hey, we're going to clean the kitchen today. Uh, okay. <laughs> this is wee stuff, huh? No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what he's done. Yeah. Yeah, well, if it uh, wasn't for Jiggy, I'd be going completely bonkers. So, well, that's good. Yeah. Jiggy's oh, yeah. good. So, he's uh, a good dude, in, in no matter pri- how you talk about him. <laughs> in the private world, I'm still considered essential, so I still have to go out in public and didn't. I still have a farm to to run. Ooh. Well, that's good. Well, uh, well, David. Before we let you go, how do we? Uh, f- once again, how do we find you online? Buy your stuff. All this. All this. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I'm on. I'm on yeah, all of them, but um, mostly go to my website, DavidGeorgeBand.com. That's where you can find me and fairly up to date. Um, I try to update. 